How's it going, my comic chat army? We're here today with Tom Pescatore, the creator of the all-new Union, the Fancy Men, Mama's Boy, and Mr. Disaster. How you doing, Tom? I'm doing all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I didn't I, create all of this, but I helped with them. Uh, all right. Well, he helped with all of them. <laughs> uh, and, and we'll get into it. Um, so let's start with the top one, all-new Union. Yeah. Is there? A, do you have a book out just called The Union? No, see that that's part of the of the concept. I guess originally it was kind of a joke on the all new Marvel stuff. Okay. When I started, I guess in like maybe 2013. So this this comic actually was was drawn and then redrawn when I decided to kind of shift the focus more towards like uh, the interplay between the characters and analyzing the teenage superheroes. But it kind of comes from, like, uh, through the story, we are teasing out the old heroes. So you're learning about the old heroes, kind of, while you learn about the new heroes. And it's more of, like, sh new heroes showing the old heroes how they can how they can act and save the world, rather than, the, rather than like, a mentor-protege relationship. Right. It's more of, like, through action, how these young kids can teach these older heroes a lesson about saving the world. Or... All right. And how many issues did you make of the, the oh, original? Man. Yeah. Uh, the original was with an artist named Leith, and that we did like six issues, and I think four we had released. And then uh, we decided to kind of just pull everything back. I I wanted an artist that um, I guess could do would do more like kid kind of friendly stuff. The other stuff was kind of more like extreme image kind of stuff. All right, like more bubbly type art? Uh, I guess more like... Uh, more like... Um, character? Character driven stuff? All right, here, I'm going to show them a page. Yeah, and I, I really wanted the costumes to look like, like, like kids made them or... Okay. They give them kind of a, a real world kind of feel. Nice. Like sneakers, kind of stuff like stitching, stuff like that. Like actual, like you actually made it in your room instead of like yeah. a Spider-Man costume. Yeah. I see him making it in his room, but there's no yeah. way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Um. And where can people get all of, all of your books at? Uh, they're on Comixology and also Indie Planet. If you want, like the the hard the hard copy. Okay. Yeah, and also Drive Through Comics. I think we got them up on there. Hmm. I haven't heard of them before. Yeah, they do like a PDF PDF printing. Okay. Um, and the Fancy Men. Yeah. So each each of the comics exists in like an expanded universe kind of thing. We wanted to do. Like, I hadn't seen many indie comics do, like, a full expanded universe where each of the each of the stories are playing off of maybe a backstory you don't know. Right. So we're, like, building up a backstory as we go. So a lot of world building within the interplay of all the issues. Oh, sweet. I didn't know that. That's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. What's the order that people should read them in? Uh, they could be read in any order, actually. All right. Because the... Uh, so the the all new union takes place in the present day, on the east coast of the U.S., and the Mister Disaster takes place on the west coast. The Fancy Man takes place in the period between. Uh, so, I guess I should get into that. What happens is that I I was always obsessed with like the uh, the Watchmen bomb ending, as a kid. So I so when I when I was like. So a lot of these characters are like created off of um, characters I created as a as a kid when I was getting into art and drawing. Because uh, originally I wanted to be an artist, but uh, I bailed out on when perspective got a little tough, got a little too tough for me. My brain just couldn't wrap around it. Uh, so what happens is there's a there's a a bomb by a character who destroys New York City, but it also kind of negates superpowers. So for like a 15-year period, there are no superheroes. 
and the all new union characters are the first kids to kind of discover that they're they're developing powers but they're in a world that was kind of destroyed by a or impacted by a war between superheroes and like an anti-superhero cult that's wow so 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 within the 15 years that there wasn't superheroes there wasn't any new superheroes or there wasn't no at all not any at all yeah it was kind of just like a hard reset and then it's like dealing with that legacy of superheroes but also like a great tragedy Hmm. all right and that's fancy man that you were just telling us about right uh that's well the only union takes place in the present fancy man is actually is the only comic that stars one of the characters in the original superhero team and he's kind of falling through time and dimensions yeah i'm gonna show him to you oh got a glare there we go (laughs) <laughs> and I, I, I like the title of it, and I'm so yeah. excited about it. <laughs> so, oh, Mama's boy. <laughs> uh, yeah, Mama, <laughs> Mama, Mama's boy uh, is created was created by a friend of mine, and it's it's like a a road trip comedy spy comic about traveling with your with your mom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right, how many issues did you run of Mama's Boy? We just have the one now. All right, do you plan? But on the second it? one is in is in process. Nice. And I'm also working on the the second All New Union with with a different artist. The artist uh, Danger Jazz, who did issue one, couldn't continue. So I have a, a new artist, Chiara huh. Yacobelli. I think that's how you say her last name. But she's she's working on the second issue right now. Sorry, I was looking at the names at the bottom. And Mr. Disaster. Yeah, so Mr. Disaster takes place in a a city that after the bomb the bomb happened in New York, the city basically walled itself off. And is kind of like a like a crime noir dystopia of like anti superhero an anti-superhero government who, like, uh, basically, I guess, produces, like, fake news to keep people within their, like, walled city, hmm. apart from the U.S., and the the character in it is, like, a, um, was a, like, a rescued experimental superhero. Like, he's a, I guess he's a, in our world, the superheroes aren't necessarily, like, created by the government. It's kind of like a natural phenomenon. So he's a he's like a produced superhero who doesn't remember his past and he's trying to like navigate this like author- authoritarian city and find out about his past. Sweet. I like the the variety that you got. Are these all the books that you have out now? Yeah, so far that's what we got. Are you going to do like a an, uh, an Avengers style team up? Yeah, so um, eventually, yeah, we we are are leading up to that, and we also have in process right now an anthology color, like a full color. So those books are black and white, and we have a an anthology colored comic coming up with a bunch of short stories that are based on the heroes previous to the disaster, of, like to the bomb. Oh, so wow. and it's it's kind of kind of be like an artifact, kind of like 1963 by Alan Moore and Rick Beach and those guys like it's going to be within our world so it's like a comic that existed within the world That's cool. of the current comics so like it's going to have like ads in it letters in it I like what you're doing you're doing something very different than everyone else yeah that's what that's what our goal was to kind of because there's a lot of great indie comics but I don't know if anybody's doing like a whole expanded universe kind of a thing not that I've heard of yet <laughs> yeah so that's what so that's the goal. I got a question. Why did you choose black and white over color? Uh, at first, it was like uh, when we first started doing this, maybe like seven years ago. It was it was the uh, purely money. <laughs> so, right. like, it, to get it printed, it was just so expensive at the time. Uh, but now I, th- I think we kind of getting into like the like uh, the duotone and like gray shading. We just kind of like it. Yeah. 
So we're sticking to it. We're thinking of doing, like, eventually, like, a colored version of the first issues for, like, when we go to cons and stuff. Um, but... Go ahead. Uh, so that's why we were doing the anthology as full color, just so that it would be, like, so different than our... than our, like, the current... Nice. The current so book. Do you go to the cons around your area, or do you go... Yeah, we had been, except, you know, now... Right, yeah. With, with the situation that we have. Right. Uh, but yeah, so I, I live in D.C., and the other guys that I work with, one of them lives, he, he, uh, like, around here, and the other guys live in, in Philadelphia, where we started. So basically, we try to work within, like, the Maryland, Philadelphia, like, D.C., Philadelphia, Baltimore, New York area. But we're willing to travel like anywhere. Just, I mean, when this is over, I'll be, we'll be wanting to travel like, as far as we can go. <laughs> yeah, hopefully we can see you down here in Florida. Yeah, I would love to. Um, are you in comic book shops yet? Uh, we got a few comic shops in Philadelphia. Uh, Blue Line Comics, I think, in Philly, and um, I just had sent my books to Third Eye Comics and around my area which is a pretty big comic store in Annapolis. So we're hoping to get in there. Um, but mostly right now online and just trying to get the word out online. Okay. And are you taking any submissions to... I thought I got taped that on there. Go ahead. Taking any submissions for your um, comic brand? Uh, not right now, but we've, we're not opposed to hearing pitches if people like the, the universe, you know? Um, do you kickstart all of your comics? Uh, we did one for for Mister Disaster number one, which was we which was cool. It was a it worked out, and we were able to to fund the first issue. Uh, but we mostly mostly been like self funding everything so far. We wanted to kind of get like a a good batch of comics, maybe one or one to three issues of each of the books so that we could, when we pitch it on Kickstarter, you know, we don't have, we're not going from nothing in right. a way. Yeah, because so. a lot of people on Kickstarter show you like three pages and they got to find it. It's like eight months book to you after. Yeah, that, that's what, that's what we were afraid of, kind of not having the, the amount of pages to show. All right, well, since you got five different books are you going to go on to kickstarter now and launch them or uh, yeah i think we might do it for the um for the anthology book that i was talking about i think that there are you know we got like full color pages so there's like um i guess we have about eight stories starring eight different heroes hmm. uh, and they're like they go from like comedy to like lovecrafty and horror to just like a really crazy superhero action fight. So they're all over the place too in terms of genre and story construction. One of the characters is like a in the 80s was like a new age cult leader. So he's like a good guy but uh after he saves people, he's like a matter manipulator, then he he they join into his like new age cult where he's like kind of a religious leader so like that's one of the conceits of the the story is that the old superheroes are kind of like gods kind of in the way of like a miracle man where they they interact with humans but in a way that's kind of removed mm -hmm. and then our new heroes are kind of like on the ground spider-man daredevil type heroes where they're like they're not that above humanity kind of thing they're Okay. They're in it with like the rest of us, I guess, in a way. All right. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think. And how many issues did you run a fancy uh, or gonna run a fancy man? The well, the fancy man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the name actually comes because the character is based on um, Richard Carrington, who is a real historical figure. Right. <laughs> and <laughs> so I, his name is a. Uh, he 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 was the I think he's the first person to observe and document what's called a Carrington event, which is like when a solar flare burns out electrical equipment on Earth. Hmm. 
So, like, the idea was that when it happened, he was actually given, like, solar powers. That's cool. So he's, like, he's basically immortal because he's, like, in the way, like, Superman powered by the sun. Right. So uh, he's still, like, a a fancy English gentleman from the 1800s living in the modern day. So so that's, like, the, the superhero superhero name comes from that that's gonna be that's like a limited series that's gonna end at eight issues the disaster and um mama's boy and the only union are like ongoing okay um after you're done with the all the issues are you gonna collect them together in a trade Mm. like a uh omnibus i think it's called yeah i mean that would be awesome to do like a trade paperback kind of thing with it all right. Um, trying to see. I don't know. Do you got anything that you want to talk about real quick? We got a couple more minutes. Kind of ran through everything kind of fast. <laughs> no, that's all right. Uh, I just, with the with the all new union. Um, uh, and I really wanted to like get into the meat of like what makes a superhero. When there's no one to show you the way. You know, kind of like a Spider-Man, but without the the Marvel Universe. Like, if there were no Fantastic Four in those early issues, like, what would he have done? Who would he have looked up to? Right. And it's, like, these kids trying to find a way. And in a naive way, a, a lot of their adventures are, like, they win by happenstance. You know, just by being, like, good. Just by, like, believing in themselves. And it builds up to the to the point where like the original supervillains ha- who had lost their powers because of this bomb are like stalking them in a way like you know the superheroes had their day and now like the supervillains should so it's like what do they do when these these villains are like following them and they don't know and they're like kind of just off on their own adventures and learning about themselves and then you have these like these superheroes with like bad in- evil intentions you know, in a way, like, stalking them fi- and figuring out who they are, who their loved ones are, and it's, like, that kind of, a, that's, like, the build-up, basically, for the series. I like it. Could you tell us the characters' names? Yeah, so the the, the character on the left is Dreamscape. Okay. Starting from the left here, uh, in, the, in, the, in the onesie pajamas. <laughs> she's, like, a, a she's She's a, a 17-year-old girl, but she's, like, she has also kind of matter-manipulating power, so she she looks like she's, like, 11 years old. She's basically, like, an 11-year-old. There we go. Makes that better. Uh, and, and then the, the character next is is Feather, and he has the power of, like, uh, to, he can manipulate his own, like, mass, his gravitational weight. And the character, the silver character behind is named Galvanic. And then the character on the far right is Atomic X, and she's like a legacy hero. Her father was a hero who died in the in the bomb in New York. Oh, sweet. So she's the only one really connected to the past, in a way. Well, I guess Dreamscape is the daughter of superheroes, but um, in terms of legacy, Atomic X is the character who like takes up her father's mantle. Oh, well. All right. And there's one more hero that joins their team, but he is revealed on the last page of the first issue. So. And you said that's a hero? Yeah, he, he joins the team in the, the second issue and becomes like the fifth the fifth member. <laughs> All right. Part one of three. Is that the story arc, part one of three? Yeah, yeah. That's like the opening arc of the story. Which is a weird, it's a time travel story. And I was like hesitant to do a time travel story. You know, there's so much things that can happen. But when we were all talking, like the writers of the other books, we kind of found a way to work in like a time paradox into the story that propels a lot of the, the, like the overall expanded universe forward. I mean, it sounds very interesting. Um, we're going to review them very soon. Oh, yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, we're going to have a... It's going to be a couple videos that we're going to do for you, Tom. Yeah, and sweet. That's awesome. Thank you for coming on. And is there anything you want to tell everybody? Or anything you want uh, to say before we go? 
just uh you know if you love superheroes and you have 99 cents you can check out the books on comicsology all right well thank you yeah. Tom.